الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما We praise God Almighty for all that He has given us. We pray for His sustenance. We thank Him, we ask for His guidance. We ask for His forgiveness when we fall off the path and for His support to bring us back onto the path of the one and only Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We bear witness that there is no God but the one God and we bear witness that Muhammad is the true servant, messenger, and last of all the prophets of God. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to shower his blessings on the prophet and his family and the companions and all who follow him. This is a historic day for our community because we have broken the barrier of fear. We do not fear anything in this life. We only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say, La ilaha illallah, that means we only submit to God. We don't submit to any general. We don't submit to any politician. We don't submit to any tyrant. We don't submit to anyone that is fomenting, enabling, and sponsoring genocide. We only submit to God. That is our cry for freedom. That struggle for freedom, brothers and sisters, as we know, will be met with challenge. Not because of us, but because of the evil that we are trying to change in this world. Not because we are being targeted or forsaken by God Almighty, but He says that this is a promise given to us that we will be given these tests. Do people think and take into account that we, all we have to say is we believe and they will not be tested. But we will be tested, and it says, so that God can distinguish, can separate those who are true to their word and those who are only fooling themselves. And so as we break the barrier of fear, let us read the history of fear done in the name of promoting special interests in the name of Zionism in America. It goes as far back as 1985 when our brother, a Palestinian Christian brother, Alex Oday, was assassinated when he opened the door of his office in the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee here in the Los Angeles area in Orange, California. To this day, the culprits have not been brought to justice. I came here to this city hall in 1986. And in 1987, my first case was called the LA-8, where the government tried to put eight Palestinians and a Kenyan woman in jail under a McCarthy law, the McCarran-Walter Act. And they failed, but it took 30 years to vindicate those brothers and that sister. What's more important, we found out, is that they had planned a detention camp in Oakdale, Louisiana, and this was a test case to put more Arab, Muslim, and any pro-Palestinian group in detention camps under the guise of trying to support uh, the Jewish community. Then, after that, we had the ADL spy case, where the Anti-Defamation League hired a retired police officer to take names of people and monitor them and give the ADL a case. They were prosecuted and found guilty of that crime. I happened to be one of those pe people. I was notified by the district attorney that I was on that list, as many of you probably were as well. Then after that, 
we had the LA County Human Relation Award to Dr. Mar Hathout, Allah yirhamu. A County Commission Award where the Anti-Defamation League and the American Jewish Committee and the Jewish Federation and all these people lobbied a county to prevent one of our leaders from receiving a Human Relations Award and they failed. But they tried. And this is all to suppress our free speech. This week, people are going to be celebrating the 4th of July. And there are going to be fireworks. And we're talking about Independence Day and freedom. And uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and so on and so forth. Those are empty words unless, unless and until we defend the freedom of speech starting with and most importantly for all those that are supporting the Palestinian movement in America. In 2001, there was a Jewish Defense League plot to bomb our office and the office of Congressman Daryl Issa, an Arab American congressman, and King Fahed Mosque. That plot was foiled. The two members were found guilty. They were taken to prison. Later, they were mysteriously killed, and one committed suicide in prison. Then, there was the freezing of Muslim charities and the attempt to seize our zakat funds by the United States government in the name of fighting terrorism. It turns out all the Muslim charities were doing work in Palestine. So while they're saying we're trying to fight anti-Semitism, trying to fight terrorism, trying to fight all these issues, they unleash the national security apparatus against our community. And so we say, yes, all houses of worship should be sacred and protected. But where were you when mosques were being surveilled if they're not continuing to be surveilled to this day? Where are you condemning the violation of our sanctity, of our sacred space? Where were you when four poor people were recruited by an informant, an instigator, a saboteur by the United States government, and it was called the, the biggest counterterrorism case that the US government had uh, prosecuted, and they were sent to jail. Just last year, those four people were given freedom by a judge, and the judge, Judge Colleen McMahon, said in a story, the greatest conspirator was the United States government in that sting operation. Where were you when a guy by the name of Craig Montiel invaded our space in an in, in a, in Irvine mosque and our community reported him to the FBI later to find out he was working for the FBI? So we agree that all houses of worship should be sacred. But if any one of them violates the principles of worship, then they should be held accountable. And so if a house of worship invites a real estate company to sell confiscated land of Palestinians, that's a violation of American law. That's a violation of international law. We don't want any violence in our mosques. We want churches and synagogues to be protected space for worship. But when they exploit that to violate the very human essence, forget about religion, but the human essence of human dignity, then it is our responsibility to hold them accountable. In history, there are many Jewish voices as you heard today. These are not new voices that we heard today. There was something called the American Council for Judaism. And they believe that it can come, that they believe that Jews can achieve full equality in Palestine only when the pretensions of Jewish statehood are abandoned and we seek instead freedom of migration opportunity based on incontestable rights and not on special privilege. The declaration of our statement of principles is beyond challenge from any quarter. 
We look forward to the ultimate establishment of a democratic, autonomous, autonomous government in Palestine, whereas, wherein Jews, Muslims, and Christians shall be represented, every man enjoying equal rights and sharing equal responsibilities, a democratic government in which our fellow Jews shall be free Palestinians, whose religion is Judaism, even as we are Americans whose religion is Judaism. That is history that is being denied. They believe that America is the Zion for Jews. Those are voices that we have to cherish and lift and understand and tell this government, starting with our city and the state and the federal government, stop treating the Jewish community as a monolithic, monolithic voice only represented by APAC and their cronies and other foreign agents in this country. APAC has done so much damage, as, as we all read this week what they did to Jamal Bowman. They even attacked Jewish members of Congress who are not pro-Israel enough, like Maureen Newman and Andy Levin. They have been a stain in the American political history. John Dulles, not a fan, I'm not a fan, but he said in the 50s, I am aware how almost impossible it is in this country to carry out a foreign policy not approved by the Jews, but I'm going to try to have one. This does not mean I am anti-Jewish, but I believe in what George Washington said in his farewell address, that an emotional attachment to another country should not interfere. And we have so many other voices that are being suppressed, and now counterterrorism law that is being exploited. And I have to say, we are so proud of the student movement. And I pray the leaders of the student pro-Palestinian movement today are going to be the leaders in this city hall tomorrow and in the Congress. That's why we should remain engaged. That's why we should remain involved in making sure the right people are elected, even if there's no good choice on the top of the ticket. But we should always think about electing those people to our local uh, office. Finally, 40,000 Palestinians have been killed, at least. And as was stated earlier, we don't know how many thousands are still buried under the rubble. Schools, hospitals, homes have all been destroyed. That is the essence of what we call genocide. And we are sick and tired of being called anti-Semitic simply for calling for a ceasefire. Anyone with any ounce of humanity is calling for a ceasefire. We demand that all these war criminals go to the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice to be held accountable for their war crimes against the Palestinian people. And we declare that all hostages should be released, whatever civilian hostages on the Israeli side and the 10,000 or more Palestinian hostages that are continuing to be rotting in Israeli jails today, all of them should be freed right now, immediately. So stop using religion as a cover for this crime against humanity and start using the words that we hear etched in these halls of City Hall where it says, even the humblest and the great will be treated with equal law, equal equality under the law. That is nonsense until we see equality done by restoring human dignity on this issue. Udu Rabbakum. Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. We praise God Almighty. We ask that he Bless our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family and all who follow him uh, and that we declare there's no God but the one God. We also want to honor Eunices Hernandez, Nithya Rahman and Hugo Soto Martinez for sponsoring a ceasefire resolution. We should go to all of our members and demand that they endorse this resolution and tell Krikorian stop playing games and stop trying to kill this resolution and Blumenfield stop exploiting and covering up the truth and stay, you know, you don't have to vote for it, but 
but stop spreading lies about what this resolution is about. It's about peace. It's about anti-war. The Quran says, Ya illadheena amanu kunu qawamina bil qisti shuhada'i lillahi wa law ala anfusikum awi al-walidayna wal aqrabin. O you who believe, you are to establish justice and be witnesses to God, even if you have to testify against yourself or your parents or your community. And that is what we are doing today. We are bearing witness. We have to believe in the power of the word. Musa alayhi salam, he crippled Pharaoh with the power of God's word. Jesus crippled the Roman Empire with the power of the world. And Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, he crippled the Quraysh with the power of the, wor of the word. That is what we're doing today to cripple oppression with the power of the good word, and that is the word for justice. And as Martin Luther King said, his white moderate friends were more of a problem than the racist he was fighting because the moderates cared more for order than justice. And that's what we're seeing today. He decried the Vietnam War and the military prowess that we have. He says, you may achieve military victory, but there will be psychological, strategic, and human costs from these failures. That's what we're seeing in Gaza. That's what we've seen in Iraq. And that's what we're going to continue to see until we end this war. Negative peace is what he called the acquiescence to oppression. We seek a positive peace that is the presence of justice. And as we move forward, brothers and sisters, let us also remember this Quranic verse in Surah uh, Al-Ma'idah, verse number uh, eight. It says, O you who have attained to faith, be ever steadfast in your de devotion to God, bearing witness to the truth in all equity, and never let hatred of anyone lead you into the sin of deviating from justice. Be just. This is closest to being God conscious. And that is what we're trying to achieve today and in every work on the Palestinian issue. We're trying to achieve justice because that is closest to God. Oh Allah, thank you for bringing us to today on this Jum'ah, this blessed and sacred gathering that you have declared for us every Friday. Oh Allah, we thank you for bringing our Jewish, Christian, Latino, black members of all society here today with us as we praise your word and we ask for your guidance. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect our students who have sacrificed themselves for your cause for truth and justice. Oh Allah, we ask you to bring this society closer to the divine values of truth and justice. We will practice together this movement and this struggle, and we understand that we will undergo more tests, but we submit to you and you only in our cry for freedom. We'll pray two rakahs for Jummah. Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Ar Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyyaka Na'budu wa Iyyaka Nasta'in Ihdinas Siratal Mustaqim Siratal Ladheena An'amta Alayhim Ghayrin Maghdubi Alayhim Waladdallin بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نصوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Brother Najee is going to give us some closing remarks. And then uh, Raida, is Raida here? We'll let her close. Wherever Raida is, can you come up front? Assalamu alaikum. I want to thank Brother Salam for a beautiful kutbah, very inspiring. And our unity is the key. Our unity is the key. So with that, we're going to stay united. I want to thank you, uh, Brother Salam. Thank you.